good morning students hope you all are good in health today we are going to start with chapter 1 from section a that is human beings and nature you know about your pattern of your question in tps your paper consists of 70 parts that is of theory and 30 marks from practical project we will discuss later today in this uh, you know in your whole book there are nearly eight chapters and all eight, eight chapters you have to learn because in each sections like section a section b section c you have to attempt all the questions so better you should go through all the chapters very well to score well in tps so we will begin our topic uh, that is the human beings and the nature with the contribution of Uh, that is a Carson. Carson, that is a Russian Carson, who marked the beginning of deep ecology. Actually, there are two thoughts for this ecology. Ecology, that is, one is the deep ecology, another one is the shallow ecology. So the deep ecology, this you know, like the movement, is began after the publication of Silent Spring by Russell Carson, marked the beginning of deep ecology movement. After this movement, people realized the importance of environment. and they realize that how they should not make the environment as a victim so they should not think about or uh, about how to you know like how to take benefit only for the environment and only consider environment as a resource after this writing of uh, rachel carson so we will discuss about the meaning of deep ecology and shallow ecology for this i will depict a example like suppose if i say that i am protecting our environment as because it gives us oxygen as give as, as because it gives us firewood as because uh, it binds the soil as because it is help uh, you know like prevent soil erosion that means we are thinking about environment as a resource in a selfish way that means whenever there is a selfish motive of human being comes into that's what we call it as a shallow ecology and just a vice versa if i say that i am protecting this our environment as it is a important natural resource or as it is a important resource for us or you know i am protecting our nature as i love it so that means we are thinking in a point of deep ecology is that understood so deep ecology is you can see the value of every living being this is deep ecology we are not considering as a human being as a part of the ecology we have to consider the non human being also that means every every entity every organism has a you know different sets of role in this ecology if we consider this part that means we are thinking in a form of a deep ecology so that is why it is given that recognizes the value of every living organism irrespective of its utility to man that means we do not have to consider that how much benefit we are getting from our environment or ecology we have to emphasize that how we can protect our environment as it is a important part of uh, you know like where we can sustain it believes in the balance of complex interrelationship where the existence of organism is dependent on the existence of others within ecosystem hope you remember the definition of ecosystem that only shows the interrelationship between the biotic and non biotic component of an environment it never says that human beings are only benefited from the environment it says the interrelationship so when we think and we when we ponder about this interrelationship between the living non living non human being that's mean we are thinking about the ecology this is again very important for your objective question that the term coined by norwegian a uh, norwegian philosopher arn nash in 1973 after this we will learn about the definition of uh, shallow uh, shallow ecology later deep ecology core principle is that living environment as a whole should be respected deep means it regards looking at self more deeply into the actual reality of humanity's relationship with the natural world as opposed to anthropocentric environmentalist that means we should not think about that how it is benefiting to us we think about that as a important resource not for our use conservation of environment only for human beings if we are conserving any resource only to sustain ourselves 
that means we are not in a state of deep ecology. So there are few ethics which we should need to follow in a case of a deep ecology. That means the well-being of a human, that just now I said that we have to think like that, that ecology means not only for the human benefit, we have to think that how can we not, you know, how we, we will stop the degradation of environment, how we will uh, value or give the equal value to the non-human life, that the, every insect has got value in this ecosystem. That value we have to impart, okay? And the day when we realize that every organism has its role, we will not degrade our environment. We will try to enrich our environment. We will try to increase the species richness. In turn, we are trying to increase the biodiversity of the environment. I get it to be. So the well-being of human and non-human life on earth has an intrinsic value in itself. The value of non-human life doesn't depend on its usefulness to man. That means every insect has got that. The in intrinsic value it tends to increase with the increase in biodiversity. That means we have to uh, take those efforts by which we can increase the flora and the fauna of the environment. We do not have got any rights to kill any organism. We do not have any rights to reduce the richness of the organism. We do not have any rights to reduce the diversity of an organism only to satisfy the human needs. The flourishing of non-human life requires a decrease of the human population. The decrease in population will also enhance the quality of life for humans. At present, human interference with the non-world is excessive, right? We are killing we are you know, harming those non-human world, but it should not be done. They are having an important role in our environment. If we are killing them, that means if they're becoming extinct, we will be the sufferer. Policies should be changed in the, follow, in the field of economics, biotechnology, ideology to bring about a change. The ideological change is mainly that the appreciating the life quality rather than increasing the standard of life. Those who believe in deep ecology must try to bring about this change. So we have got three principles, I mean three simple propositions, wilderness preservation, control of human population, subscribe to simple living so that environmental damage is So we do not have to lift our standard of living, rather we have to think about those steps of the, those efforts by which we can make our environment suitable for it. That's all for today. We will discuss later, uh, you know, the, the rest part of the chapter in the next few days. Thank you. Sir.